Today, I will be installing an application that will allow me to monitor my containers in a very cool way. I have been hosting my own applications for over a year and a half now, and the only way for me to know that the applications are running or not running is when I log in to that specific application. And it's usually when I need to use the application. Instead of being able to do what I set out to do, I would end up fixing the issue with the app. I would end up being sidetracked or distracted. Then it would take me much longer to finish what I set out to do. And sometimes I would end up not being able to do it at all. The application I'm referring to is Uptime Kuma. Uptime Kuma, which is created by Lewis Lam, is a web-based monitoring tool that could help me monitor the status of my websites or apps. It's got a user-friendly dashboard that shows historical data, provides real-time monitoring of your self-hosted services, and with it, performing checks as often as 20 seconds. It can even notify you of expiring SSL certificates if you have them. Best of all, it's easy to use, easy to install. It sends you notifications using Discord or Slack or Signal. You don't even have to use your email. You don't even have to be logged in to Uptime Kuma to be checking your containers. Yes, it's easy to use, but it's also very powerful. For advanced users, there's also integration available with other services or tools. Here we have Uptime Kuma running, and I have a few containers that I've already set up so that we can monitor. We have Bitwarden, Jellyfin, Lychee, Amstream, Open Media Vault, uh, PikaShare, this is the dashboard. If we go to settings, you can change the time zone. In appearance, we have light, yikes, dark, or auto, which would default to whatever your device is using. There's the notifications here. We can set up notifications here. Uh, notification type, there would be a lot. Uh, there's Telegram, Google Chat. Uh, I know there's Microsoft Teams here, yep. Slack, Signal, and we can always use email. And then the reverse proxy, so you can use Cloudflare, or we can set up uh, any reverse proxy that you would have. We have here Nginx, Apache, Traffic, and Tags, Monitor History. We can change that, I think that's too long. Maybe a month. The Docker hosts, I haven't set that up. Security. You have change password. You have two-factor authentication, which is highly recommended. This is where you add the API keys that you would want Uptime Kuma to be working with. Here's where you would be setting up backup, going back to the dashboard. So, so far, everything's good except for this one, which is pending. This one is hosted on the node. So it's got the self-signed certificate. But if you go here, Everything looks fine. We can clear that. That first warning I got was when I was setting up the monitoring for AzureCast, which is hosted on Linode. To install, go to the GitHub page for Uptime Kuma. Here you will see the option to install Uptime Kuma in Docker, as well as for platforms based on Linux and Windows. Since I have a Docker machine, I'm going to grab the Docker run script from the website and convert it to a YAML file that I can then use to install on Stacks in Portainer. So here's the converted YAML file on my cheat sheet. So I will just copy everything and then go to Portainer. Go to Stacks and create Stacks. Container name I'll call Kuma. Then I'll just paste everything in the web editor. The ports I'll just change to 3101, then volumes I'll point to the config shared files on my Open Media Vault. Lastly, I want to change one to the latest. This way I'll be pulling the latest image. After I'm done editing, I'll just hit deploy the stack, sit back and let it do its thing. And it does not take long. It probably took just a couple of minutes before I got the confirmation that Stacks has been successfully deployed.
If we open a new tab and type in the IP address of Uptime Kuma, we will be greeted by the login page, which is the port we specified on the YAML file we used to set up. Here on settings, we can select the language. This will be English for me. Enter the username you want to use next, then password, and then confirm password. Now here we are on the dashboard. Nothing to see yet here. We can add monitor. The fields we would have to define such as monitor type, name you want to call it, heartbeat interval, which is expressed in seconds, pertaining to how often you want uptime Kuma to be checking your containers. Here we have the notifications. There's Telegram, there's email, there's Microsoft Teams, there's Slack, Discord, Signal, and so on. Going to settings, there's general, where you can change the time zone, search engine visibility, primary base URL, etc. Now on appearances, we can change to themes like light, dark, or auto. Auto being the theme of your device. For heartbeat bar, there's normal, there's bottom, or there's none. I think normal is perfect. There's also settings for notifications here, reverse proxy, etc. I hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully it has helped you in some way. Please like and subscribe if it has. Thank you for watching.